Well, hello. This video is intended to very succinctly dispel a common building myth. Often builders will say to homeowners, houses need to breathe. And I'm here to tell you that unfortunately, they aren't telling you the whole truth. I don't think they're intentionally lying to you, but what they're actually saying to you is houses need to leak. Because the fact is, is that when a home is built and the home is a system, it shouldn't need to breathe. It should ventilate. You and I, as people, we need to breathe. So let's break this down a little bit so that you're informed as we go forward. My name is Brandon Farr. I'm with Level Up Strategies. We're licensed builders. We fix broken homes that are brand new, brand new homes that break. And so there's a lot of remediation that we've done over the years. And so we've encountered the issues where when the ideal plan for a new home falls apart, um, we get called in and so here we're going to share our best with you so all the best stuff happens in your world so your house needs to breathe i've heard stories about builders that would cut the clear poly that's often behind the, the drywall and they'd cut it after um, the inspector had come through and before they put the drywall believing that you know fresh air needs to be moving through your entire building and and there's no building science behind that psychology, but what they were really trying to say is that um, there needs to be a free flow of oxygen. If you stagnate oxygen in a home, occupants are going to feel like, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's muggy in the house. Um, but also, your house needs to dry if it gets wet. Now, what we've done as we become uh, increasingly more energy efficient in our building codes and our, and our practices of construction is we've created a problem here. Yeah, and I just want to be I want to be really clear for the people that want to just, you know, quickly get to the point of the video. Humans need to breathe. Houses need to ventilate. If your builder says houses need to breathe, they're they're not current. What they're trying to say is that your house needs to have air coming into it somehow through a non-controlled way. Oftentimes it's under the windows where all that moisture and mildew collects it air should be leaking out there because that's what it's traditionally done in traditional building practices there's no airtight ceiling around the perimeter of the window where it attaches to the wall so so air is leaking out there all the time underneath the doors and the sills in the in the corners of your your framing and the top of the wall it's gotta air's gotta leak out now what it it also, it takes, takes the hot air that you've spent money to heat, it leaks it into the atmosphere and the cold air that you've paid to air condition and it leaks that out into the atmosphere. So it's, it's not energy efficient, but it's also not healthy. And what I mean by that is if there's pollen outside, if there's smoke outside, which are common environmental concerns, that comes into and out of the house through the places that the house leaks because it needs to breathe. Well, that shouldn't make any sense. Today, we have technology in the mechanical system. It's called an HRV or an ERV, heat recovery ventilator or energy recovery ventilator. They do the same thing. They, they take the hot air, the heated air inside of your house and they exchange it with fresh air outside and they exchange the heat as the, the streams of air pass. So the cold air in the winter doesn't freeze the air inside the house. The hot air of the house actually warms the outside air, preheats it so it comes in and they're, they're super efficient. I mean, we're talking north of 85% energy efficiency, so it, it, it's a beautiful way of making sure the occupants in the house get lots of fresh air because humans need to breathe. Your house needs to ventilate to maintain happy, healthy people. So when your builder says they need to breathe what they were really saying is they need to leak and that that building practice needs to die it just it needs to go away because even if even if leaky homes which is like you know the the older style 80s home 70s home 60s there's so much air exchange through the walls through the electrical outlets through the um the joints and the windows doors so the the benefit of that is that the houses could dry when they got wet which is one of the concerns that you know come full circle on this and and we'll talk about this um in a moment here your house should dry but it shouldn't have to be drying through dirty moist corners where um where you have no control over the contamination in the exchange so 
I'm gonna use my red pen here and I've pre-drawn it. What you're gonna see on building plans these days in, in the more progressive um, municipalities, you'll have to actually submit a building plan with a continuous air barrier. And what they wanna demonstrate is that your home now is an airtight unit. And what that means is that air barrier actually has to go around the windows and around the doors. And what they're doing is they're, they're offering an opportunity for builders, product designers, um, and homeowners to have super energy efficient homes because what they say is that if you heat the air inside, it should stay hot and shouldn't leak out. Design principle is fantastic. The challenge that we're going to bump into, and this is, this is you, know, I'm, I'm, you know, beating a drum here because I think it's really important for the health of our um, of, of home occupants, so you and me and families that live in homes, is, is if the drying isn't considered, I think we're going to actually have a lot of health concerns because the problem that we're going to see is if you build an airtight house that isn't ventilated effectively or isn't filtered effectively, you have an airtight box with living people in it we become the filtration systems, you and me, our lungs. I don't want that to be the case for you or anybody I care about, frankly. So one of the ch challenges we're gonna see with these airtight houses is that when the barriers fail to perform in their ideal state, which they will, because human beings install them, and you know, there's a, if there was a clear sheet of poly along this wall right here, an acoustical sealant all the way around the perimeters and the electrical boxes had acoustical sealant all the way around or tape or it was all sealed up properly. It's perfectly vapor impermeable. That's your VRB, the vapor retardant barriers of polyethylene. When you acoustical sealant, you create an air barrier with it. So this is a common building practice. The VRB and the air barrier is the clear poly right behind the drywall. The problem is there's no livable resilience to that. Because as soon as you hang your plasma TV, you hang a picture, you hang curtains, uh, you hang your cabinets, you just poke holes in it. So the moisture, the 30 liters of moisture that your family breathes into the air of your house every week has to go somewhere. And it'll go through all those penetrations, it'll leak into the penetrations, and then you have another problem because now you have moist air in your wall assembly that's designed to be airtight because on the back side you have what we refer to as a WRB, which is a water repellent barrier. And it doesn't allow the free drying of that moisture once it's in the wall cavity. So, uh, you know, the, the uncomfortable analogy that, um, that is often used in the building space is you create a, a vapor sandwich. It's like a, if, a Ziploc bag with a sandwich in it, you know, in high school, I can remember seeing these, you know, in somebody's locker, and it just turns into a moldy mess inside the, because there's moisture in that sandwich inside a Ziploc bag, the moisture can't go anywhere, it just creates mold. So the problem we're gonna see if, if drying isn't brought into the equation is we're gonna have really airtight wall and roof assemblies with mold in them. And when that contaminated air enters the house, it's gonna have limited places to go except the people in them so and again this is where humans become the filtering mechanism which which shouldn't be the case so you're going to watch me us there's a group of people that care a lot about building science we're going to advocate your house your house does not need to breathe your house needs to ventilate humans need to breathe your house should not leak but it should dry and drying is um and here's a here's a quick uh, alternate so Rather than clear poly on the outside or inside of your house with the acoustical sealant, you can use what I, I call an intelligent membrane, um, like a Gore-Tex. You know, and I say Gore-Tex is a great example of a, a membrane that uh, that controls moisture in different directions. So you know, the rain can't get through my Gore-Tex jacket, but my sweat can diffuse out freely, which means that your WRB, which is that really important water repellent barrier, which used to be uh, tar paper and now it's like there's white building membranes there's a bunch of people that make those you know the idea is to stop the rain from getting in inevitably water does get through but the problem is once it gets through it there's no intelligence to that 
uh, tip traditional membrane to allow moisture to come. It, it tries to stop it coming in, and if it leaks through a flashing detail up here, it gets in, well, it can't get back out. It's so stuck in the wall. Whereas if you use an intelligent membrane system and their manufacturers that make those, um, moisture does get in by accident because somebody cut it or there's a leak or whatever. It'll allow the, the vapor diffusion to push out. Human beings breathe a lot of moisture. You boil a lot of pasta, whatever. Your, your vapor gets into the wall assembly where it shouldn't be. If you use an intelligent membrane system, it'll diffuse back out. With a proper ventilation mechanism, you're going to have lots of fresh air. It'll get filtered. You'll be fine, happy, healthy for a long time. So my hope for you is that uh, this offers a little clarity. And again, just a little bit of a red flag. If you, if you bump into people that are like, oh, your house needs to breathe, that's often an indicator that their psychology is such that they're gonna go against building code and building science because they have a tradition of doing things that was relevant in a time where air exchanges per hour was not a thing. Uh, it just wasn't. And today, if we follow those traditional building practices, even incredible builders that work really hard to serve their clients for a long, long time, I think we're going to see some people with unintended consequences um, of the of the mold in the walls and um, and the health, the long term health challenges that's going to pose for us as humans uh, just isn't good. So um, how's the builder says, hey, if you bump into a builder goes, yeah, yeah, we should have a ventilation plan when we can we can analyze we can, by the number of people in the square footage of your house. We can tell you exactly how much ventilation is required. Um, that's a good indication that you're on the on the right path uh, and then the piece that i would add to that because you can have a ventilator and still have polyene acoustical sealant and a white water repellent membrane on the outside that creates a vapor sandwich for your your real structure uh, make sure that you have a drying plan because humans are a part of your house system your house should be resilient for humans but your structure is also a system um, and the drying element here is, uh, is the missing piece. So uh, go forth with that and uh, have a great rest of the day.